May the grace and peace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you today and all days. Good morning, I'm Pastor Brian Geis, and I bring you greetings from the congregation here at First Christian Church of Vinton. As we continue here in Virginia with the governor's stay-at-home orders, we bring you our Sunday, April 19th worship service virtually. We're thankful that you've chosen to share with us this morning, and we trust that the service will be a blessing to you. As the organ prelude begins, allow it to speak to your hearts and prepare them for worship. Again, thank you for joining us.
Almighty God, you are the infinite, eternal, and unchangeable, glorious in all holiness, full of love and compassion, in grace and truth. All your works praise you in all places of your dominion, and your glory is revealed in Christ our Savior. Therefore, we praise you this day, blessed Holy Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. Hear now God's word as found in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. A reading from the book of Psalm. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my God above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fail. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall also rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness and joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And now a reading from the book of 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you rejoice even if now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him, and even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, 
the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Jesus Christ. Reading the gospel accounts of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus sometimes reminds me of watching old movies of the Keystone Cops. In virtually every narrative, the serenity of Jesus stands in sharp contrast to the frenetic activity among followers of Jesus. The chronological sequence of what happened immediately following the resurrection of Jesus is as difficult to determine as is the nature of the various personal reactions to Jesus by the disciples who encountered him. Well, after the resurrection of Jesus, people who were as familiar with Jesus as they were with members of their own families, they failed to recognize him. Others saw him and knew his identity immediately from even a distance. Some individuals spoke of Jesus' physical traits, his scars, his hunger, Others told stories about his mystical nature. Here one moment, gone the next. Moving in and out of a room with closed doors. Participants in the same event with Jesus frequently had different accounts of exactly what had happened. Some people find the conflicting reports of the resurrection disturbing, fearing that cynics may charge, why the whole thing is made up. You Christians can't even agree on one story. Many believers labor to reconcile all the accounts, to impose some kind of order where there is confusion, to create uniformity out of diversity. Such people seem to fear that others will not believe in the resurrection of Jesus unless they can prove the resurrection by offering harmonized accounts of what Jesus said and what he did. Personally, I'm not of that mindset. I find the confusion and the contradictions in the resurrection stories of the gospel profoundly reassuring. Obviously, what we have in the gospels is not a carefully choreographed presentation of Jesus developed out of a studied strategy. Not at all. What we read in the gospels are the disparate accounts of numerous individuals writing out of the excitement of wonder born of experiencing a totally new reality. The resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, dead on Friday and alive on Sunday, and in their midst during the subsequent days. Amazing. Think about the dynamics here. If people who watch a serious automobile accident can't agree on the details of what happened when talking with the police only a few minutes after the accident, then why should we expect hundreds of people to speak of their experiences with the resurrected Christ with words and interpretations that are exactly alike, carbon copies? The affirmations of the resurrection of Jesus that pervade the Gospels are not the product of mob psychology and imposed doctrinal orthodoxy or a strategy to convince the world about this stupendous event. They are the product of hundreds of different personal experiences. And the diversity of all those numerous individual reports related to the risen Christ resides great promise for you and I, my friend. The powerful meaning of the resurrection of Jesus for our lives is lost if the resurrection is only considered a doctrine. And we have to say every individual has to give a thumbs up to this or a thumbs down. The resurrection of Jesus isn't a theory to be proven or a creedal statement to be repeated so much as it is an experience for each and every individual in their own respective experiences by means of a personal relationship with him. Note what eradicated the doubt of Thomas 
and pushed a confession of faith across his lips, a personal experience with the risen Christ. Because Jesus provides our best insight into God, the new reality of the resurrection of Jesus gives us the confidence regarding the certainty of the promise. You need never be alone. God is with you. One gospel writer placed such assurance explicitly on the lips of Jesus. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. The implications of that promise energy in our participation of worship. To be sure, those implications stretch far beyond just corporate worship. The resurrection narratives make up a relatively small percentage of that material in the Gospels. However, that small amount of material provides us with a large amount of truth. The risen Christ appeared in the midst of a small group of fearful, discouraged, downtrodden disciples. Jesus appeared on the shore of a lake in which some of his followers were fishing. As reported in the text for today, Jesus appeared to a man who questioned almost everything and doubted the reports of the resurrection of Jesus. In a familiar place, Jesus shared a meal with some of his followers. Not long after that, Jesus said he joined two travelers reeling from shattered dreams to walk along with them and to talk with them, encourage them, and to break bread with them. Jesus appeared to individuals who knew him well enough to avoid the use of titles and call him Jesus. But Jesus also showed up among people who had never enjoyed a one-to-one -one conversation with him before. Jesus appeared among people who spoke boldly of their faith. Jesus appeared to, among individuals who seemed to be struggling with the possibility of faith. Do you sense truth running through all of these observations and pulling them together like a golden thread? No one was or is left out in Christ's story. The risen Christ comes to all people no matter where you are in your walk of life today, Christ rose for you. He comes to all people, the confident, the not so confident, the disturbed, the discouraged, the self-assured, the doubting, those who are grieving, the rejoicing, the fearful, the hopeful. No time or no location, either geographically or spiritually, falls outside the reach of the risen Christ. We can experience the divine presence when worshiping or working or playing or struggling, whether we're in a sanctuary or whether we're encouraged to stay at home in times such as this. Whether it's a great day or a bad day for you, whether it's in the daytime or the middle of the night, the risen Christ comes to us wherever we are, and He stays with us. When we speak or write of our personal encounters with the Christ, the story of resurrection grows and grows exponentially. It continues. Each installment that we bring to the story is as peculiar and particular as the ones are in our gospel reading today. Diversity marks our varied encounters with Jesus. However, that diversity gives way to unity when even through different voices we speak of the rock-bottom reality at stake here, and that is Christ comes to us. The truths that spring from the affirmation of the gospel writers in our personal experience are overwhelming. I get that. We are never alone. God is always with us. The closer we are with God, the closer we're drawn to one another, even in times when we're apart, such as this. There is no challenge that we cannot meet and negotiate together as God's people. 
We serve a risen Savior, as we sang earlier. God is alive and among us. You ask me how I know? You inquire as to the reasons for my faith in the risen Christ? My answer, not unlike the answer you might have heard from Thomas, draws from many sources. But this one is primary. I know Christ lives because He lives within this fellowship and He lives within my heart. Amen. Jesus died on Calvary's mountain long time ago. And salvation's rolling fountain
We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors as we ought, and we have not always heard the cry of the needy around us. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything becomes fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ we are forgiven. Jesus, our Savior, has been given all authority. Let us seek his intercession that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Jesus Christ, great high priest, pray for the church, your broken body in the world. Remember especially Terry, our general minister and president, Bill, our regional minister, our deacons, deaconesses, and elders here at First Church and all who carry forth your joyful word. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, you who are ruler of all and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, we pray for the world. Make it subject to your rule. We pray your guidance, especially for Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, and Bradley, our mayor. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of Jesus, who frees and guides us according to your will, baptizing us through the church to be your people in the world, we give you thanks. By your Holy Spirit, empower us to show your love to others, even as we pray for all members of your family in need, distress, or sorrow. Be present to all those who continue to be affected by the coronavirus pandemic around the world. Heal the sick. Strengthen and protect those who care for them, comfort those who love them, and comfort and give peace to those who have lost loved ones already. Be with the many who have had their jobs and finances affected by the economic downturn. Help each of us do our part to assist in providing for their needs during this time and beyond. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, ruler over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Strengthen and encourage our parish as we seek to live daily for thee and to reach out to and serve our community. May this place always be a beacon of faith, integrity, inclusiveness, compassion, social justice, and stewardship. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, keep this church and the church universal in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship before you, for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Father, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and gave us new life in Jesus Christ. In all times and in all places, your people give you praise and proclaim your glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember with joy the grace by which you created all things and made us in your own image. We rejoice that you've called us to be a people in covenant to be a light to the nations. In spite of the prophets and pastors sent forth to us, we continue to break your covenant. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to save us, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of your favored one Mary, sharing our life, he reconciled us to your love. At the Jordan, your Spirit descended upon him, anointing him to preach the good news of your reign. He healed the sick and fed the hungry, manifesting the power of your compassion. 
He sought out the lost and broke bread with sinners, witnessing the fullness of your grace. We beheld his glory. On the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks to you, he broke the bread and offered it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Taking a cup again, he gave thanks to you and shared the cup with his disciples and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink from this, all of you. This is poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. And after the meal, our Lord was arrested, abandoned by his followers and beaten. He stood trial, was put to death on a cross, having emptied himself in the form of a servant and being obedient even unto death. He was raised from the dead and exalted as Lord of heaven and earth. Through him you bestow the gift of your spirit, uniting your church, empowering its mission, and leading us into the new creation you have promised. Gracious God, we celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Grant that we may be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight, that our lives might proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed through his blood, serving and reconciling all people to you. Remember your church scattered upon the face of the earth, gathered in unity and preserved in truth. Remember the saints who have gone before us in communion with them and all of creation. We worship and glorify you always. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Join me now in praying as our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The wine which we drink, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The cup which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ for all. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed upon them and be thankful with faith. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
for this moment in time. There will never be another exactly like it. Help us each to live by faith, to walk in hope, and to be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. God bless you.